Welcome to Beyond Distribution with GTDC. Today's episode features Kristen Russell, who's the president of Global Enterprise Computing Solutions for Aero Electronics. From mentorship and sponsorship to perseverance, Kristen Russell shares her unique insights with our host, Frank Vitagliano. This episode was recorded live at the 2023 GTDC Summit North America. How can workforce diversity help the IT industry meet its future needs? What role can distributors play in new technology adoption and improving the user experience with the complexity of new solutions and consumption models? Listen for those answers and more in this episode of Beyond Distribution with GTDC. Welcome everybody to another episode of Beyond Distribution. Uh, today, I am privileged to have with me Kristen Russell, the president of Global Enterprise Computing Solutions for Arrow. Welcome. Great, thanks Frank so much. It's such a pleasure to be here and I have to say, thank you for doing these. I've really enjoyed uh, listening in on them. Good, that's yeah, great. That's yeah, great. We, we were, you know, we weren't sure when we first started them. You know, <laughs> it's sure. kind of like, oh boy. But um, yeah, and so I, I really wanted to talk to you. One of the reasons I did is because, um, you know, your background is not a traditional background of folks that are in distribution, yeah. right? You come from different areas. So it'd be great yeah. for you to kind of tell us where, you know, kind of how you got here. Yeah, great. So, um, so I've been in tech for most of my career, but from lots of different angles, right? So selling, buying, creating, providing technical services, um, consulting, and um, have also had the opportunity to canvas a bunch of different industries and markets and roles over my career. And as you mentioned today, I'm at Arrow and I run our, our IT distribution business for the mm -hmm. company globally, um, as well as our embedded compute business um, mm -hmm. called Intelligent Solutions. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the roles that you had over the years was CIO, Yeah. right? And I've said for a long time that that is one of the mm -hmm. things we sort of um, don't pay enough attention to mm -hmm. because when we talk about the channel, you know, we tend to talk about the vendor, the distributor, the solution provider, and nobody talks about the end user. Yeah. And if, the, if it wasn't for the end users, we wouldn't be here. So <laughs> exactly. give, tell me your perspective on that and what you see there and maybe how that you've been able to leverage that knowledge in, in what you're doing now. Yeah, so um, it is really a, a unique, I think, in the channel to have the background as a chief information officer. Um, I think for me, because I was on the buying side for so much of my career, it gave me the opportunity to really understand um, you know, what, what end users need and what they really value from a technical perspective. And I think how I apply that in my role today is at Arrow, we believe that you do need to understand the end user and their need um, around tech so that we can better enable the channel partners and also provide better insight and perspective to our suppliers. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's really critical. In fact, you know, it's interesting, you know, we're, we're here at our event. Yeah, it's right? great. And what, one of the things that I really wanted to do was to do a panel with end users. And so Dave O'Callaghan is, is hosting one Wonderful. of those. And um, because I think it's so important to understand what are they thinking, because everything flows from that. Yeah, right? exactly. And yeah. you know, to your point, it's it's all about business outcomes, right? Totally. It's not about the technology for technology's sake. It's about, you know, are they trying to drive down cost? Are they yep. trying to grow revenue? Are they trying to reduce, you know, risk and, and um, you know, or increase compliance? So there's lots of different things. So we need to frame it in that in that means and in that way yeah. so that we can do a better job of serving them. Yeah, that's great. So one of the other areas I, I wanted to talk to you about because I know you're very active uh, in it is the whole area of diversity. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that, you know, I think this industry has made progress, um, but I also think there's lots more, you know, we can do. And so, you know, a number of years ago, the channel company started, you know, the Woman of the Channel event mm -hmm. and the CompTIA does some things. and. I know you've been active in a lot of it. Give me your views on, on that and perhaps also what more can we do you know, as we continue to um, look at this and particularly, you know, I know you have global responsibility, we're gonna think about how that works in Europe and also in you know, Asia. Right? Yeah, uh, well I appreciate you bringing this to the table because it is something that I'm very passionate about and 
it's not just about women's representation in tech. I mean, as a CIO, you know, there was only 3% of all CIOs globally that were women at the time that I was a CIO. So I think that we have made progress. But for me, um, diversity and equity and inclusion is about innovation. Yep. Because it's that diverse thought that actually allows us to think differently about the products and services that we're, we're bringing to market. So it's really a business imperative as far as I'm concerned. So a couple things. Um, you know, one, I always get the question, how do we hire, how do we find more women or more underrepresented candidates? Um, there's two things that I think we know is, one, there has to be more than one underrepresented person to be interviewed for a job. You have to have at least two people um, that are underrepresented for them to have a really fair shot of, of being able to get the job. So that's one thing. I think the other thing as it pertains to hiring is um, making sure that the interview panel is also diverse. Hmm. Um, because we know that that, uh, that shows to the, the candidate that we appreciate diversity, yep. but it also makes sure that they feel like there's a welcoming place for them to, to join, right? Yep. So those two things are really important. And then the last thing that I would suggest is it's really, really important that we think about underrepresented people in supervisor and above roles, yeah. right? Because they're influencers, they're decision makers, and probably most importantly, they showcase to people coming up into their career that there's a place for them to be successful yeah. and develop and over they time. Do role models, right? Yeah, right? exactly, and, exactly. And lead into mentorship and those Ab types of things. Absolutely. So, what advice you know would you give uh, folks that that you know are are would fit into the category of underrepresented? What, yeah. Representative. What would you give? Yeah. So there's uh, you know I I. Um, I think there's three things that I would give advice to underrepresented or women coming up in their career. Number one is go for opportunities. Even if you don't feel like you're totally 100% ready for them, I mean, no one's perfectly ever, <laughs> ever, ready ever, for the role. ever ready for the role. Right. So go for the job because what we find is that, especially with women, they don't tend to, they tend to undersell um, their capabilities. And so go for those opportunities, even if you're not totally sure you yep. are ready. Um, I think the second thing is ask for sponsorship. And the difference here for me is mentorship is great. It's about asking for advice, yep. but sponsorship is asking for advocacy. So someone that's going to put the hand up to help you come up. And I think that that's really important for underrepresented people. And by the way, Frank, as, as you know, and I know you've done this for a lot of people in, in your career, that can come from lots of different places, sure. right? So that's not um, men can sponsor women, underrepresented can, can sponsor other underrepresented. It doesn't, it doesn't have to come from a specific place, but that is really important. And it's important that the, the women and the underrepresented uh, populations ask for that sponsorship. Yep. And then the third thing that I would say, and this is advice that I give my um, two daughters all the time is, um, and I, I give this advice to anybody coming up in their career is, you know, work hard. <laughs> you know, perseverance. I grew up in a family where perseverance and tenacity and hard work really trumped everything else. And so I think that that's an important thing for everybody early in their career to understand that that's something that is important today and as relevant today as it was in the past. You know, one of the things that was interesting is, and I know you have global responsibility, yeah. um, we did, when we did this event in Europe last year, um, we did a panel on diversity yeah. and it was really very well done. Er Eric was there and oh, you know, other members of your team. Uh, but what struck me is, you know, I got up after the panel and I was thanking everybody and I looked around the room and it was like, you know, 12, 15% women in the room. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, you know, this yeah. is part of what we got to fix, what we got to do better at, right? Absolutely. And so, you know, this year for our event, um, we, we've got, you know, a focus on ensuring that we are able to represent that, yeah. you know, the way it ought to be. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, I talk a lot about the fact that, um, you know, hope is not a course of action, it's not a strategy, right? right? And when I think about diversity and inclusion within my organization, 
you know, we have to we have to have that mindset. Yeah, we definitely. have to say like that we want to see a different environment out right. there, and we're willing to put actions out there that help us to get there because it's not going to necessarily just happen naturally. No, it won't. But you do create a climate, and you guys I know have yeah. at Arrow. You create a climate for it to happen. Yeah. But you still have to sort of manage it. You still yeah, have to exactly. still have to work. Well, it. and again, again, I appreciate your um, leadership there because. You know, what I've found in my career is it's been a lot of men that have helped me and have given me that sponsorship to help me rise in my career. And, and that's really important. So thank you for, for yeah, your leadership the, there. Yeah, the mentorship piece is really important. And yeah. the thing about the mentor piece that, that matters that I found, of course, and I've been doing this for a long time, is <laughs> it, it extends. And, and you have what I am now, I call a, 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 the branches of my tree. And, you know, there'll be people that, um, I mentored, and now they're mentoring yeah. other people, and you you watch and you see that. And of course, you have to be old to to get to that point where it's you know <laughs> yeah. two or three levels down. Yeah. But it's it's really kind of fulfilling because it goes beyond just what you do on a day to day basis. Absolutely, you know? I mean it's the way we can leave a legacy, right? Yeah. And so that's that's probably the the most fulfilling part of the job. Yeah, it's kind sure. of funny. We just did a, a vendor advisory council, and um, you know when some of the folks walked in the room, they were kind of like. Did everybody in this room at one point work with you? And I'm like, yeah, at some point <laughs> they did. That's as a awesome. Of fact, so. Well, and we, we benefit too because it's a pretty small industry, it right? Is. So it's we bump a, into each other. It's but. amazingly small yeah. <laughs> for the size of the industry, yeah. right? For what yeah. we're dealing it's crazy. with. But, so speaking of that and transitioning to that, you know, obviously, um, you know, when people think of dist distribution, they, they tend to think about it in the traditional way. You, I think, have a benefit of not necessarily doing that because you've come in sort of after the fact, yeah. you didn't grow up in it. And plus you came in, you know, working for Arrow and, and the focus that you guys have had yeah. in the enterprise space has been, you know, a little bit different. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, your view on how that evolution is, is kind of taking place and what's, what's happening and what are you guys doing to, you know, further the, whether you call it the digital transformation yeah. or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Right? Yeah. So I, you're right. I don't have any of the baggage of, yeah. you know, what, you know, maybe it was perceived as previously, but I, I have to tell you, I love our role in the middle. And I, I, I would say that the, uh, dis, di, the distribution has to be the orchestrator. It has to be the glue of the channel. And um, again, we we are, I feel that we are in such a privileged space mm -hmm. because we get to see the makers and innovators of technology, those companies that are getting new technology out there, and then those channel partners and end users that are trying to enable that technology for business outcomes. And we're the only ones that get to sit in the middle of that, totally. that ecosystem. And so I would argue that our role is becoming increasingly important, and that's because the complexity of technology is only increasing. Yep. And so we're really the only ones that can come together and aggregate really complex technical solutions yep. and help suppliers get their products to markets that they don't want to serve directly and also help channel partners and enable them to be able to determine what that right technology is. And for me, uh, we also have this huge opportunity. You mentioned digital. And I talk about our digital platform, Aerosphere, as the digital distribution platform of yep. the future because if you think about all of those um, technical solutions, all the complexity of it, a digital platform is the way to help navigate that, t that complexity. Mm -hmm. And we know that the buying journey starts digitally. So if we can enable a digital platform to help channel partners find, buy, and most importantly, manage those mm -hmm. technical solutions, mm -hmm. those complex technical solutions, but also help suppliers find and expose their products to new markets and complementary adjacent technologies, that's a win-win for everyone in, totally. in the market. And we, we as distributors, get to, to get to provide that, which yeah. I think is huge. Nobody else can play the role. That's I right. Mean, that's right. Because you've got the upstream and the downstream piece, and that's right. you're right in the middle of it, and you've got the capabilities. The other thing you've got, and you know, see again, this is good because there's a lot of like legacy noise yeah. over distribution, <laughs> and you probably haven't experienced, certainly like a lot of folks have, and certainly I have over the years, of 
this whole discussion about the disintermediation of distribution, right? Yeah. And you start thinking about the conversation. It's it's foolishness because the the role and what the distributors have been able to do over the years and the way you've been able to evolve um, and provide operational excellence at scale. Yes, exactly. Nobody else can do that. Exactly. And a lot of exactly. folks have tried. Exactly. You know, exactly. including some vendors that I work for <laughs> exactly. have tried. Exactly. Can't yeah. No, you can't do it. And, and I think that, um, you know, the speed and the, you know, the velocity of change and the complexity of change in, in tech today means that you have to rely on an ecosystem in a bigger way than we ever have before. Yeah. And um, so I just feel that it's such a privileged space for us to be in. And we try to listen really intently to both suppliers and vendors and channel partners to understand what they need. And they're leaving to us almost digital breadcrumbs yeah. to tell us where we need to innovate yeah, our totally. services and think beyond what we're doing yeah. um, because it's changed. It's, it's really changed from kind of the traditional ways of supply chain expertise to now strategic technical expertise and being that trusted advisor. You know, it's funny, you know, so you and I were on a panel at Levation Yes, event, right? yes, exactly. And I one of the well. things that, that I was stunned by, and this is probably a phrase that you hate to hear, but at the end of that panel, there were a number of folks in the room, and a lot of them were emerging technology folks, so yeah. You, maybe you can understand it a little bit, but it, you'd heard, you got the phrase of, geez, I didn't know you did that. Oh and it gosh. drives you crazy, right? <laughs> it, it, yeah, I mean, I, I can't <laughs> tell you how many times when I talk about the things that are available to both channel uh, partners as well as vendors that Arrow provides, they're like, I had no idea that yeah. Arrow did that. Right. It, 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 like you said, it happens all the time. And so I, I think about a couple of things as it pertains to that. One. You know, and I, I mentioned this on the panel, we need to do a better job as distributors yep. helping to articulate the things that we do. Things like solution labs and right. training and financial services and beyond distribution, go to full scale go to market solutions, right. marketing. Um, we need to do a better job of articulating that and educating the channel on those services. And then I also would encourage vendors and channel partners to raise their hand and say, okay, can you do this? Right. And if we can't, there's probably a chance that we can. Yeah. You know, So that's the listening part that's really important to me as yeah, well. Yeah, and one, when you came in to Arrow, if I'm not mistaken, you one of the roles you had was you were developing those sort of custom solutions, if you will, a Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. It was for um, our embedded compute solutions business, which I still have responsibility for, uh, which is called Intelligent Solutions, which again is a way for uh, OEMs and system integrators to get custom solutions out there mm -hmm. at scale. Right. And they don't, they don't want to necessarily focus on the hardware aspect of their business. But as I always joke, software requires hardware to run it. So, yeah. so somebody needs to help with that. And those, that business is such an important part because that's where we find opportunity because there's value that needs to be served at a scalable level and distribution is, is going to step up to that plate and help help the channel to do yeah. just that. Yeah, uh, totally. So what are you hearing from your customers? Because I know, you're, you know you stay close to it, right? Yeah. Um, because this is a funky time, right? I mean, uh, it really <laughs> is. It's, yeah. The, the word. <laughs> um, you know, and we, one of the things we have tomorrow is we've got a, an economist coming in to talk about it, but there's so many different things happening yeah. And when you, you, know, you look at the overall you know, industry growth projections, they look like to be somewhere in the four to five range, yeah. but, but huge difference in endpoint solutions versus you know, enterprise solutions and storage and edge networking, and, edge, yeah. exactly. What, what's yeah. your, what, what are you seeing there? What are you yeah, doing? so um, first of all, I'm glad I'm not a CIO anymore <laughs> yeah. because, because yeah. it's super complex out there. Right. I always say you know, technology is, is not becoming less complex. It's actually becoming more complex. Right. As a consumer, it's becoming easier. But for, right. for businesses totally. and CIOs and channel partners, I mean, think about just cyber, right? So, you know, thousands of vendors, yep. cr each creating multiple products. So if you're a channel partner and your end user is asking for something, how do you, 
how do you know who yeah. to choose? How do yeah. you know what works together? So again, this is where I think our role as distributors and being the orchestrator of this whole ecosystem is so critical because we're seeing it all play out. Yep. We see all of the, the you know, vendors and, and creators of that technology and then we see how it's being consumed and used. And so we actually have kind of the catbird seat to be able to see which solutions work together, what is driving the best outcome, and how to be that trusted advisor, the channel partner, to say, you might want to try this, or come into our solutions lab and actually experiment so that you're not just reading about these new technologies, yeah. you can actually integrate them. But it's usually complex. I mean, if you look at um, you know, X as a service, and I won't even talk about all the, you know, perforations of that, right? right? Totally. <laughs> but X as a service is, is growing very rapidly, faster than any of the industry um, uh, technology segments independently, and yet it's super complex. Totally. And as a former CIO, I experienced that firsthand, trying to manage multiple subscriptions to multiple end users, yep. And trying to do that was so difficult. Different end dates, different, different start end dates, dates. Different, different uh, yeah. you know, measurement models, right? right? Is right. it by the seed? Is it by the compute? Is what is it? What are they? How are they pricing it? So, it's super complex. And even for our suppliers, um, everyone's moving to X as a service. So totally. it's not just the native cloud providers or software. It's it's our it's our legacy hardware yep. uh, vendors as well. And again, simple concept. We understand it. Yep. Um, but super difficult for the channel to figure out how to do it. Yeah, and every vendor's doing it differently. Yes. Right? And yes. so therefore you got to build a, a sort of a customized approach, right? I think the good news though that'll come out of that, at least my view, because we saw it in the early days with soft, software mm -hmm. subscriptions, is obviously the big vendors you'll have to work with one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And that's complex, yeah. it's time consuming, yeah. you know, it's, it's hard. But I do think once you begin to get the solutions and you begin to get a view of how I can do this at scale, then what I think distribution traditionally has been able to do is then you can go then provide that service to the smaller players and you don't have to replicate it. It's done. It's for built, sure, for right? sure. And and because of going back to the digital platform, we now have an even faster, more elegant way to help manage that, both for channel partners and for suppliers. And so when we think about Aerosphere and the future of Aerosphere, it really is that platform to help the channel partners, you know, find, buy, and manage yeah. all of the complexities of the, of the subscription economy, as well as helping our suppliers extend their value into new markets. Yeah, and it and it does, and it's clearly a collaborative approach, For right? Sure. Because you build it. You, I know you've built it with input from the vendor community in terms of linking them in. And then of course, your customer and you guys have, have had a history of very loyal solution providers who've yes. been with you for a long yes. time. Some of that yes. started from the models that existed at the time, yes. right? Where, where, you know, the there was a different, it wasn't an open model, sort of a closed model. Yeah. Um, but even in an open environment, you've had very loyal customers. And so that's- For sure. Helps. And I think, you know, it goes back to being very intentional about listening to those customers and listening to what it is that they need so that we can constantly innovate. And then to your point, once you innovate, then you can provide that at scale to a, a much larger audience. So yeah. that's the value. Totally. And it comes back to, and that's one of the things, as I said earlier, it, you know, you, you look at the building blocks of distribution over the years. Yeah, and, yeah. and it starts with the ability to build and the major investments that have been made to build the infrastructure, and I kind of called it the building blocks, and then you tack on things as new technology becomes yeah. available and as you know, platforms are, and marketplaces are a huge you know, play here, um, but, it, but, but it, it gets tacked on to um, operational excellence at scale, and then everything that gets done is based on that. And that is the differentiator. Exactly. I, I always joke, um, and you'll appreciate this, based on my background, when people are like, you know, you know, how did you end up in distribution? And I'm like, I feel so lucky to be in distribution. And I say, it's not your grandmother's distribution yeah, that's anymore. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so to your point, we've built um, on top of legacy um, structures and scale. But now it's it's how do we innovate on top of that based on what's happening in the tech ecosystem today? Well, and I'll tell you, you know, it's also really interesting that 
what, what has happened over the last couple of years is, you know, pre-pandemic, there was a lot of uh, doubt. There was a lot yeah. of, hey, what's going to happen? For sure. You know, the hardware piece of the business is, is you know, is, is kind of scaling down. You know, what value does distributors provide in this new digital economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the pandemic hit. Yeah. And you guys stepped up like nobody could ever imagine, right? Thank you. And yeah. you stepped up in a way that was able to leverage what had been built and then tack on the other pieces of it. And now I don't hear that noise anymore. That's right. It's kind of gone away. It's kind of right. like, oh, no, there's value. In the, and it's showing up in valuations. It's showing up in stock prices. It's showing up in the what what uh, private equity thinks of you know exactly. distribution. It's really e pretty interesting. Exactly. And I, I think it's just about describing it and explaining it in very simple terms around we're a velocity motion for go-to-market. We're a right. velocity motion for growth both for channel partners and for vendors. And understanding that it's it becomes really an exciting space to be and something that, again, we need to continue to tell that message and innovate on top of that in order to make sure that we continue to be as relevant as we are today. You know, everyone is clear. It's not one vendor, one deployment, one cloud. Right. It's a combination of all of those. Totally. And so that's where distribution really can play a starring role in being that orchestrated to, to be able to aggregate all those solutions yeah. together. Well, I mean, you just told the story. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you told it really well, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, this was great. I, you know, I appreciate you coming and doing this. Um, you know, I think what you're doing and the viewpoint that you came in with and the energy and the sort of just, just you know, the not being, uh, you know, somebody who'd been in it forever, yeah. like us old technology guys, <laughs> right, yeah. um, is really refreshing. And I think the work you guys are doing is terrific. So thank well, you. Well, thank yeah. you. And I, again, I want to thank you um, and the entire community because I think, you know, this story has to be told. Yes. And you and GTDC are doing a great job of telling that story and educating the entire industry on the value of distribution and what role we can play, you know, today and in the future. So yeah. thank you. Good. Well, thank you. All right. Take care. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Frank.